Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like leaving your keys in your car while you run into the gas station for a snack. Most of the time, you're probably fine. But what if you come back to see someone driving off with your car? Every time you connect to an unencrypted network, cafes, hotels, airports, any hacker on the same network can gain access to your personal data, like passwords, financial details, etc. It doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack someone. Just some cheap hardware is needed and a smart 12-year-old could do it. Hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling personal info on the dark web. So this is why you need ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet, so hackers can't steal your sensitive data. It would take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. Also, it's easy to use. Fire up the app and click one button to get protected. Also, my favorite part, ExpressVPN works on all devices. I have it on my phones, laptops, tablets, and more. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash ratchet. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash ratchet. And you could get an extra three months free. Expressvpn.com slash ratchet. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. I get so overloaded with work that I don't tend to necessities the way that I should. One of them is taking care of myself. And I know that's not good because I think, how well would you take care of your car if you had to keep the same one your entire life? That's how our brains work. So why don't we treat them the same way? There's a million ways to support a healthy brain. And one of the great ways is therapy. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat only therapy sessions. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. And what I love most, it's much more affordable than in-person therapy. And you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash ratchet. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash ratchet. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable with Demetria L. Lucas. Let me apologize in advance for the lateness of this episode. It is 318 on Tuesday, and I'm just sitting down to record. I have had quite the day, quite the morning, actually. I was up super late packing last night. I'm almost done, thank God. And then I had to get up super early this morning because I dropped the link for See Some Ghana. About a month ago, I had mentioned that my friend and business partner now, Davida, who I always go to Ghana with, sometimes I host her trips, sometimes I'm just in Ghana at the same time as her trips. But I told you we were teaming up for a trip to Ghana that I'm going to curate. So all of my favorite things in Ghana. So Davida put together like an amazing trip and we dropped the link for it this morning. It sold out in in four minutes. I knew we were going to fill all of the slots. Um, I, I didn't think that was going to be a problem. I didn't expect that to happen in, in four minutes. That that shocked me. The trip went on sale at noon EST and Davida called me around one and was like, um, hey. <laughs> and I was like, hey. And she was like, So I know you know it's sold out. And I was like, I do. And she was like, do you also know that there's like 130 people on the wait list right now? That's like five times more than than there are spaces on the trip. And I was like, I do. And she was like, what what are we going to do about that? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. This is a one-off trip for me. I'm moving to, to Ghana, yes. My intent is to bounce around the continent. So Ghana is my first stop. I don't have the bandwidth to do another trip. I'm not going to really just be sitting in Ghana, literally like time in the schedule to host another trip. My itinerary is kind of nuts. So we're, we're trying to figure out like what we's going to do with this situation. And she was like, do you think we could do one in February? And I was like, I'll be in South Africa. Like, I guess I could fly back. We'll see. We'll see. It's an, it's an option on the table. Maybe couples trip, maybe singles trip. I don't know. We're playing around with those details to see what it could look like. I've been very adamant that this is like a one and done, but it is definitely a one and done for my time in Ghana. 
I'm super excited for the the people that signed up for the trip. It's really an amazing lineup. It's literally everything that you've seen on my Instagram page and more. There's a couple of things that I've wanted to do that I haven't had a chance to just yet. So I will be experiencing them with the travelers for the See Some Ghana trips. I'm super excited. I'm really super excited. And I can't wait to share you know, the pictures and videos and commentaries, the dear mom, because um, I think this is going to be epic. This is my very first curated trip anywhere at all. That's also a professional bucket list thing for me. It's really something that I've wanted to do for quite some while. I want to introduce people to the Ghana that I fell in love with so much that I'm literally moving across the ocean in less than a month. I didn't do much for the 4th of July. I was mostly in my apartment packing. I don't leave LA for another week and a half, but I have a visitor coming this weekend. My birthday is on Friday. So I wanted to, um, to get all that out of the way before he gets here. And I told you, like, this is like the first 4th of July in what, like 10 years? With the exception of literally one year, I've worked Essence Fest every year since 2009, I think. I didn't go either in 2012 or 2013. I think it was 2013. No, because I was on TV. It must have been 2012. This is one of the first 4th of Julys that I haven't been in New Orleans and wasn't working the entire weekend. And I'm glad that I have this big packing project to do because I didn't know what to do with myself. And I was like, what do people do on the 4th of July? Like, I don't even know who in the friend circle hosts the 4th of July barbecue or, or anything like that. Not that I was able to go, but still. But, then, but I packed all day and then watched the live Essence Fest, the live concerts on Hulu all night. Most of them were pretty good. A lot of sound issues. The Roots whole set, bringing out Method Man and, and Raekwon and Ghostface and Little Kim, freaking amazing. Method Man looks like a god among mere mortals. You know who also looks like a god among mere mortals? Dougie Fresh. Always respected Dougie Fresh. Don't have a crush on Dougie Fresh. I just want to acknowledge, you know, you look at some people and they just look healthy. You can look at certain people and be like, oh, you drink water. You take your vitamins. You work out. You, you eat a lot of vegetables, don't you? You vegan. You vegan. You can just look at people and be like, damn, they look healthy as fuck. That's how I feel like when I look at Dougie Fresh. I'm like, you look like what you put into your body. I had this thought while I was sitting on the couch drinking wine, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop drinking this wine when my current stash runs out. I was like, I don't think Dougie Fresh even drinks. If he does, it's got to be high end. He looks amazing. Same thing with meth. I want to be one of those people that you look at and be like, wow, she looks really radiant. She looks healthy. I want to look at me and think that. And then other people can look at me and think that. Kim, people have been going in on Kim since... She came out on the BET Awards. She looked, she looked better. We addressed her appearance on the podcast right after that, so I'm not going to belabor it here. I'm just going to literally move on to the next subject. What else was good? We obviously didn't see Nicki Minaj. I'm not the biggest Nicki fan. I don't like hate her or anything, but I tuned in to see everybody before Nicki. I tuned in, I think, just to have it on to see who was performing. But Lauryn Hill did a set and Nas did a whole set. Lauren was amazing. It was technically Wyclef's set, and then he brought out Lauren, and she performed music from the Fugees. Are they still on tour? I remember at one point there was a tour, and then I think the tour stopped. I think it was because of COVID. Am I remembering that right? But I just want to point out that Wyclef had an amazing show, and Lauren came out on time, looked amazing, sounded amazing. She had on this beautiful dress, I guess maybe a gown. It was down to the floor. She was fully covered except for like her face and hands. Very modest and very chic. And I was like, I like this. I've been looking at more modest clothes because like I said at the top of the episode, like my plan is to bop around different countries in Africa. Many of them are Muslim. So I got to be more mindful of, of what's covered or rather what's uncovered. So I had to find more dresses that are lightweight, at least cover the elbows, cover the knee and don't show any cleavage and cute. You can find dresses where you're, where you're all covered up. But I was like, I want to be covered up and sheet covered up. I don't want to be covered up like Little House on the Prairie covered up. But I say all that to say Lauren looked amazing. And I was like, ooh, could that dress work? I mean, it's a lot of fabric. But I've also learned that you visit Muslim countries in the cooler months. Years ago, I went to Morocco. I was walking around in long sleeves in 110 degrees every day. And I was like, did, we, did no one check the weather before we booked this trip? No, the answer is no. No one checked the weather. It was a great trip, but it was very uncomfortable because of the heat. Nas was freaking amazing. Nas is another one. Looks like he drinks his water, eats his vegetables. I know Hennessy is one of his sponsors, but I'm like, he's not drinking that shit. He can't. You can look at him and tell he don't drink it. He might sip here and there. 
for the sake and purpose of commercials, but you can look at Nas and tell he's not like a regular drinker. He just looks fresh. Man's got to be 50. He looks fresh. That's, see, that's what I mean. I got a big glass of water sitting right beside me. I've been like mainlining water. That was my takeaway from Essence Festival. Start mainlining water. Nas looked amazing. Nas sounded amazing. His sound actually was amazing. Saturday was, I remember Janet was the headliner. Patty LaBelle. Patty sounded good. There's so many people, I can't remember. Janet, her performance looked good, but the sound was terrible for, for people watching at home. Some people's sound was just kind of off. Janet's sound actually was, was terrible, and it was really distracting from her performance. And I felt really bad for her because she looked good. The performance looked strong. And then, you know, the sound was bad. Who else performed that night? Remember, D-Nice performed, and he brought out Elder Barge. Remember from a previous episode, I, I said um, that I, I went to see D-Nice and Friends when I was in Miami, and Elder Barge came out, and I was very confused because Elder Barge was, like, hitting all of his high notes but couldn't hit the regular notes. And I was like, so you could do the hard shit, but not the easy shit? Elder Barge was having an off night when he was in Miami. He redeemed himself at, on the Essence stage. He sounded really good. He hit all the notes, including the low ones. I was very pleased. I was very, very pleased. Was there anybody else that I need to mention? Ja- oh, Jasmine Sullivan. Jasmine Sullivan was also on Saturday. She did good. I was really pleased with her performance. Um, also, her pink jumpsuit. And I was like, I want a pink jumpsuit. I love it. I think that's like her performance look. Like when she performed in L.A., I think she had on like a black version of her entire outfit. I think I thought it was adorable. But I'm also somebody who walks around like literally every day in a sports bra and leggings and a caftan. That is my outfit to go everywhere. I don't know what I'm going to do when I get to Ghana because I can't walk around like that. It's a much more conservative culture. Like in L.A., I am conservative because I put the caftan on. People here just walk around in bikers, like booty short bikers in in a sports bra. No one bats an eye. It's just completely normal. No cat calling, at least not in my neighborhood, but and, and it's perfectly fine. But me and my captain is conservative in Ghana. Walking around with my whole midsection out would, would be kind of frowned upon during daylight hours. Nighttime is a whole different thing. Oh, we didn't talk about the Nicki Minaj situation. So Nicki Minaj was supposed to perform. I mean, and she did perform, but the performance was supposed to be streamed live on Hulu. And Essence and Hulu had been advertising all week, like Nicki Minaj, Nicki Minaj, Nicki Minaj. And then literally right before Nicki Minaj was supposed to come on stage, Angela Yee, who was was hosting the concerts for the the viewers at home, um, Angela was like, yeah, unfortunately, due to reasons beyond our control, Nicki Minaj won't be airing. And I was like, wait, what? Like, not the biggest Nicki fan, but did want to see the, the concert. I heard through the grapevine that, uh, that Nicki said she wasn't aware that Essence would be streaming her concert. This is what I'm hearing. Um, and so she refused to go on until either the cameras were removed or they promised not to stream it. But that was what the holdup was and why Nicki wasn't shown. That's what I heard from friends in high places. And people think she's pregnant. I saw pictures of her performance. I saw a video of her performance. She didn't strike me as pregnant. She strike me as, as being fuller. But I don't, I don't necessarily think she looked pregnant per se. I think sometimes like anytime a woman gains weight or like doesn't have a flat stomach, people are like, oh, she's pregnant. Maybe she's been eating. Maybe her period's coming. I don't know. I don't automatically think because a woman, because she gained weight, is pregnant. But we'll see. But we'll know for sure in a few months if that is or is not the case. It can be hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel when you have high interest debt. And sometimes it can be even harder to ask for help. That's where Upstart comes in. Upstart-powered personal loans can help you pay down high-interest debt, all online with simple and easy-to-understand payment terms. Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high-interest debt, or funding personal expenses— Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Upstart knows that you're more than just your credit score. And what I love most about them is that instead of just looking at your credit score alone, Upstart's model considers other factors like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. Also, Upstart is super fast. You can check your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score. You can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. 
Don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash ratchet. That's upstart.com slash ratchet to check your rate today. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash ratchet. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like leaving your keys in your car while you run into the gas station for a snack. Most of the time, you're probably fine. But what if you come back to see someone driving off with your car? Every time you connect to an unencrypted network, cafes, hotels, airports, any hacker on the same network can gain access to your personal data, like passwords, financial details, etc., It doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack someone. Just some cheap hardware is needed and a smart 12-year-old could do it. Hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling personal info on the dark web. So this is why you need ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so hackers can't steal your sensitive data. It would take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. Also, it's easy to use. Fire up the app and click one button to get protected. Also, my favorite part, ExpressVPN works on all devices. I have it on my phones, laptops, tablets, and more. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash ratchet. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash ratchet. And you could get an extra three months free. Expressvpn.com slash ratchet. Sunday night, new edition. I thought a new edition looked great. The the sound again was off, so it was really frustrating to watch. It was also messed up for the Osley brothers. And I was like, come on. Ronald Osley was doing an R. Kelly song at Essence Festival. And I was like, bruh, like I know this is one of your biggest hits, but you have so many. Because as he said, he and the Osley brothers have been together for what, 60 years? Over 60 years? You have an entire catalog of hits. Like you really need to to do R. Kelly. Um, But he did. They showed the, uh, the video. There's more than one video with R. Kelly and Ronald Osley, isn't there? But the most popular one, when they showed the video, the Osley brothers were, were taking a much needed break. And I say much needed because at one point when I was watching the concert, I was like, does, does, I, does, I was like, do they need to stop the show? Is Ronald Osley all right? At one point he was like resting so hard on the microphone. I thought he would fall over if it wasn't there. I had a live thread going on my, um, my Facebook page talking about the performances. Somebody pointed out and they were like, well, his wife is one of the backup singers. Like his wife is the blonde backup singer and his brother is on stage. So, you know, there are at least people up there who, who would care enough to say something, hopefully, if they realize that, you know, he was in distress. But I was like, OK, but I'm looking at him and he looks in distress. Like maybe somebody needs to say something. So they took a quick break, which is part of the show. And also it's worth mentioning that, that Ronald Isley is a full 81 years old. If he's tired, it's not because he's not prepared. It's because, you know, he old. He needed a break and, and that's fine. So they played this video they, and they'd cut it up. So it was just Ronald Isley being shown on the video. But then at one point, R. Kelly flashed across and I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not R. Kelly. Not on the screen at Essence Fest. Not fresh off being sentenced to 30 years for trafficking women, for sexual assault. But I was like, oh, no, not R. Kelly on the screen at Essence. I heard from friends that were there. They were like, no, the audience booed when R. Kelly was shown on the screen. But, but. But Ronald Osley comes back out and proceeds to sing this R. Kelly song. I would say 30 seconds of which the volume is off on his mic and the woman he's duetting with. Who fucks up the sound on Ronald Osley? Okay, so it finally comes back in. They're singing this song. And, you know, it's clearly like an R. Kelly song. And people in the audience moving and grooving without a care in the world. And I was like, yo, this is an essence low moment. You know, I love the essence. I'm sorry. It is. I'm old school essence, like Susan Taylor had just left, I think like my, my second week on the job, it was still very much operating in, for lack of a better term, respectability politics. And admittedly, it needed to move away from that. It needed to evolve. It needed to grow. It needed to expand. Absolutely. But R. Kelly on the essence stage and then the cameraman cutting to the audience of black women body rolling to R. Kelly. And I'm like, oh my God. My respectability politics flared up. It did. 
It absolutely did. And I was like, oh, no, this is too far. This is much too much. Much too much. I missed the WizKid performance. If it happened, I didn't see it. I didn't see Tim's either. I'm looking at the lineup right now. I didn't see Tim's either. She went on before the City Girls. But the time I tuned in, City Girls were already off. The way I saw the lineup was City Girls and then Little Kim and then The Roots. And Little Kim ended up coming out with The Roots, which is fine. But I tuned in looking for Little Kim and it was like gospel music on. And I was like, wait, did the gospel music come before City Girls or after City Girls? Like, or did they replace Little Kim with gospel music? But the lineup went from City Girls, who I heard, I didn't see it again, um, but the reviews of them were not so good. The footage that I saw, I was like, oh, no. And the audience, there was, like, there was no audience. I know it was early in the evening and City Girls is not quite the, the Essence demo. And that's not to say the Essence demo doesn't like ratchet shit. It's just they're a little young. Um, Essence has been <laughs> on, <laughs> on social media. They keep calling it Auntie Con. Like, I want to be mad at it, but I'm also like the accuracy. The accuracy. But I was like, City Girls just doesn't really, didn't really mesh. But they were on the lineup performing to a largely empty crowd. The whole Superdome, the host like 60,000 people. It looked like 20 people were in there. Let's be generous. Let's be generous. Let's say 100. But all the seats up front say maybe like five people empty. I was like, that would have been very disheartening to me. Maybe that's why their performance was, you know, deemed not good. I didn't see it, so I can't make an assessment of it. But it was good. Like, I really did enjoy the live stream. I don't know if it was ever just, you know, as convenient as it was on Hulu. Whoever did that, like, kudos. That was that was a good job. Like, you might need to work on the production a little bit. I was like, work with the sound person. You might want to might, might go with a different sound person. But otherwise... It was really good. That was my fourth. The fourth across America kind of sucked. There was a mass shooting in Highland Park, which the people in Chicago were very quick to point out and was like, ah, ah, ah. I know Chicago gets a bad rap. Highland Park is not Chicago. Highland Park is a suburb of Chicago and it is very rich. And they were like, if you would recall where Ferris Bueller lived, that's Highland Park. There was a, um, a meme circulating on social media just to drive home the point that like, no, no, no. This ain't the black people acting up. This is rich white people shit. This is not Chicago on their bullshit. I was like, okay, duly noted. We hear you. So this is what was circulating. It's a guy named Pugs Morgan. It's at Pug Sanco on Twitter. He says, quote, I'm seeing people try to say Highland Park is typical Chicago. Highland Park, Illinois is where Michael Jordan lived. It's where 16 Candles, Home Alone, Risky Business, and Ferris Bueller were filmed. This is not quote unquote Chicago. It's one of the wealthiest towns in America. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. With HelloFresh, you can select meals from the Taste of Summer series that are sure to become everyone's new favorites, like Old Bay Shrimp and Sausage Boil and Family Style Grilled Steak Lettuce Wraps. Bust out the grill on a nice warm evening and make dinner from HelloFresh's cookout collection with recipes like Melty Monterey Jack Burgers. I love HelloFresh for its foolproof step-by-step recipes, which means a joyful cooking experience and a stress-free summer. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Ratchet16 and use code Ratchet16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash Ratchet16. Code Ratchet16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Never get tired of a good whodunit? Then you'll love June's journey. You play as June Parker, an amateur detective on a quest to solve the murder of her sister and uncover her family's many secrets. You'll need to find objects devilishly hidden in intricate scenes full of little details before the timer runs out. A variety of game modes and puzzles await. Whether you're craving a good mystery or just need to get away for a while, June's Journey is the perfect game for you. Sit back, relax, and let your inner Sherlock escape to the glamorous Roaring Twenties. You'll search for hidden clues to solve mystery after mystery across thousands of vivid scenes. And my favorite part, with new chapters every week, there's always a new case waiting to be cracked. 
I love June's journey. It's one of those games that really makes you think, and I love searching for the hidden clues. Find your inner detective. Download June's Journey today. Available on Android and iOS mobile devices, as well as on PC through Facebook games. So on the 4th of July, during an an Independence Day parade, 22, 23-year-old white guy, that's the standard MO for these mass shooters, he killed seven people and at least 46 others were injured. This guy went up on the rooftop of of a local store and started firing with a rifle. More than 20 shots were fired. As it stands right now, seven people killed. 46 others were injured in the shooting. 25 of those people had gunshot wounds. The suspect, I said earlier he was 22, 23, he's 21, Robert Eugene Cremo III. He shot up all these people, murdered seven of them. He did not kill himself. So as usually happens in in these mass shooter situations with white people, the suspect was found and taken alive. So he's still alive. Despite police knowing that he has a gigantic weapon, despite police knowing that he is armed and dangerous and capable of killing people, shooting people, he was taken into custody also on the 4th. They tracked him down. They were able to arrest him without, without even shooting him. They were able to apprehend him. He is currently in jail and otherwise in good health. I saw someone say on social media that a mass shooting on the 4th of July is the most American shit ever. And I laughed when I read it and I was like, yo, the accuracy, the accuracy, the accuracy, Auntie Con, the accuracy. That's what we do in America. We shoot shit up. That's just what it is. And we are expected to deal with it. The same way like COVID, deal with it. We're going back to work and you're going back into the office. And yes, there's still a pandemic raging, but it's just a new way of life. So deal with it. Capitalism must roll on. You know, right to bear arms. That's not what anybody meant. There were no automatic weapons at the time that was included in in the Constitution. But here we are. Nothing's going to change. It didn't change last time. Like all them little kids that got shot up in that school down in Texas. We've had like a couple mass shootings since then. Nothing changed. Nothing's going to change for this one. People are going to be all outraged for another. It was six days for the dead kids. Maybe three, because I think most of the victims are adults. But even if it was like, you know, all kids, it's just, it's seven, not like, you know, a classroom size full. But again, nobody did anything then. So I don't expect them to do it now. This is just, you know, you go outside, you go to a mass event, you go to school, you go to a concert. Um, may the odds be forever in your favor. It's real hunger games out this bitch. You go outside. Good luck, Americans. Happy fourth. I also want to talk about this situation that happened in, um, in Ohio, Akron, Ohio, the young man, 25 years old, he was a DoorDash driver. Police tried to pull him over for a routine traffic stop. And I don't have all the specifics on this. I had to stop reading because by the time I was made aware of the case, it was just after the police had released the video of the shooting and I don't want to watch it. And every site that I was reading had the video. It was like automatically playing. And I was like, I'm not trying to see this shit. So I had to stop. The things that I read beforehand, the police were trying to to pull this this gentleman over. Um, And his name is, hold on one second, let me pull up his name. His name is Jalen Walker. And again, routine traffic stop. I'm not sure exactly what the issue was, but they tried to pull him over. He didn't stop. He led police on a high-speed chase. They eventually caught up with him. Police say that while he was driving, he fired a shot out the window. From what I read at the time, it didn't say he was shooting at police. It just says he fired a shot out the window. There was a flash of, of light that was believed to be from a gun. So the police catch up with him. Um, he gets out the car. He runs. Police are, are chasing him. At some point, I guess I'm, I'm going to imagine that they're in pursuit of him because they want to catch him or they want him to stop. According to what I read, he, they were chasing him. At some point, he turns around and the police fire 90 shots. Eight police officers um, fire 90 shots at this guy and 60 of them hit him. I read he was hit seven times in his face alone. And the police go over to him. He wasn't dead yet. What I read said the police tried to assist him. They were looking for the gun. There was no gun. He was unarmed. But 60 shots fired into his body. He had to be like, I I say this only for description only, not to make light of the situation. But I was like, he had to be like full of holes, like on like some Swiss cheese shit. 60 times into one person's body? 
seven times in your face. Your face is only but so big. Seven bullet holes in your face. You survived that? They cuffed him. They cuffed him. And he died, obviously. He got shot 60 times. By the time the Emmy showed up, the body was sitting there with handcuffs on it. You cuffed him as he lay dying from 60 bullet holes, an unarmed man. You cuffed him? What, what did you think he was going to do? Like get up and fight you with 60 bullet holes in him? Even just basic dignity to just, you, you killed somebody that had no gun, 60 bullet holes. You couldn't just let them die out. You had to make them as, as completely uncomfortable as possible by cuffing them. You wouldn't do an animal that way. You wouldn't hog tie an animal that was dying like that. You wouldn't do an animal that way. It would be considered cruel. Even though it's an animal, people would say it's inhumane, even though it's not a human. People would be like, how could you? That's a living thing. How could you? That's somebody's child. Somebody's 25-year-old child. Somebody's son that you shot up 60 times with no weapon, with no weapon on him. Now, I did read that he had a weapon in the car. The police said that they found a loaded gun in the car. I'll take that as a grain of salt. I'll see how that shakes out. Um, I'm fresh off watching um, We Own This City on HBO. You know, the police planting a gun to be like, see, there was a gun. I'm like, yes, the gun was in the car. It wasn't on the person that you shot 60 times. It was in the car. That's two different things. Like, say it was his gun. Like, okay, it's his gun, right? The gun is in the car. The gun is not on the person. The person that you shot 60 times didn't have a gun on him. He was unarmed when you shot him up like that. When I wrote about this on Instagram, I was speaking back and forth with one of my friends in the comments. And I was like, yo... What did they think they were shooting at? And I say what very intentionally because did you think that was a human? Because there's no need to shoot at a human 90 times. There's no need to shoot a human 60 times. Like what do you think black people, black men are that you feel like 60 bullets, 90 bullets, because that's what was fired. When you fire a bullet, your intent is to hit. Like you might miss, but your intent is to hit. How do you feel 90 shots at one person is necessary. What are you trying to stop? And again, what? Because you don't think that you're shooting at a human. That's not necessary for any human. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense. So I ask, like, what do you think black men are? What do you think black people are? Like, what superhuman strength do you think black people possess? Why well, I've got to shoot someone 90 times because that's what's required to stop them. That's like, that's like some shit you see in movies. Like in King Kong, when they first encounter Kong, everybody's like, what the fuck? And they start firing all these bullets at like this eight story tall gorilla and it's unfazed by it. I was like, is that what you see when you see black people? Do you see like an eight story tall gorilla in Jurassic Park when they encounter like, you know, like the brontosaurus or some shit? They start firing all these weapons and, and the brontosaurus is so large that it's unfazed. Like these bullets are just like equivalent of like a pinch, right? It does nothing to the brontosaurus. Like, is that what you see when you see black people? Because I can't understand why you need to fire 90 shots at a person. Like, so what do you see? Because it's not a person that you see. It's not even like a bear. You wouldn't fire 90 shots at a bear. People are like, why the fuck would you do that to a bear? So I'm like, what do you see? You see an eight-story tall gorilla? That story really hurt my heart. And one of the reasons I, I, I share this story at this particular point in the episode is not because it happened on the 4th of July, which is, you know, the theme, obviously, of this episode. But to point out that, like, this unarmed black guy gets shot, literally gets shot 60 times. He's shot at 90 or more. I keep saying 90, but it's 90 or more, according to the news reports, with no gun on him. And yet, this white guy, also in the Midwest, we're talking Ohio and Illinois, but this white boy who just killed seven people and shot another 25 or so and then another 20 or so after that are injured he he gets arrested we're his 60 fucking bullets you know he got a gun he just killed seven people no bullets for him but for this black doordash driver 60 i didn't see anybody say it but i was like if that ain't the most american shit ever the white mass shooter getting taken into custody alive without a scratch on him and an unarmed black man being killed in a hail of bullets, a literal hail of bullets. That's also real fucking American. How many times have we seen that version of the story play out? America is, is not very creative, but it's, it's consistent as fuck with this fuckery. It's sad. I saw the police in, in the case of, um, of, the, of the gentleman in Akron, the 25-year-old unarmed DoorDash driver, the black guy. Police released the footage of him being killed, of him being murdered. And then officials were 
pleading for peaceful protest, basically begging people, like, don't riot, don't burn down the city. And when I wrote about this on Facebook, I said, you know what, I, I hope they don't burn down the city. But I was like, but black people keep getting killed. And I read, too, this is like the third black man that's been killed by police in Akron in the last six months. So clearly their police force has a problem, like every other American police force. But the police keep taking lives. They keep murdering black people. And it's like the same shit. Like, don't burn down the city. Don't burn down the city. Don't burn down the city. Care as much for people's lives as you do for property. Like the same way y'all be on TV pleading, please don't burn down the city. Keep the protests peaceful. Can y'all go plead with these police officers the same way? Please don't shoot no more unarmed black people. Don't shoot armed black people. Treat black people that you think have committed a crime. Treat them the way you treat white domestic terrorists. Treat them the way you treat these 22, these 21, 22, 23 year old white boys with these big ass guns that go into schools and grocery stores and and concert venues and shoot that shit up. Treat black people like you treat them. Unless they kill themselves, they get out alive. I will never forget and always bring up is to shame the fuck out of America how Dylan Roof went in Mother Emanuel down in South Carolina and shot up them old black people that he had just prayed with. And police went in there and got his ass, brought him out alive and took his ass to Burger King for a hot meal before they took him to jail. Treat black people that you suspect of crimes. Treat them like you treat white mass murderers. That's all I want. You talk about unequal. You could be a white mass killer. Kill seven fucking people on the 4th of fucking July and live to see another day. Black folks, try making a DoorDash run. 50-50, whether you're going to make it home alive. That's some traumatizing shit. You know what's funny? And not funny as in ha-ha. Funny as like fucked up. The world knows how traumatized black people are in this country. When I was in Ghana, I was coming back from the club with this guy. It was like 2.30 in the morning. He was driving me back to my hotel. It was my friend's, the guy she was dating, his boss. Remember I told you the story about the guy who worked at the airport who came and like literally like pulled me out of line when I was getting off the plane? And, and fast forwarded me through the airport, him. He had taken me out to go to a party and we were driving home and it was a police stop. It's just like a checkpoint. It's not even a sobriety checkpoint. It's just a, a checkpoint, literally a, a way for police to make a little extra money. They, they shine the light in your car. They ask you how you're doing. You say great officer and you give them 10 CDs and then they, they wave you on your way. 10 CDs is the equivalent of maybe like a dollar 60, if that. But when we pulled off, like he was like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. And, you know, just like police encounters. And he was like, what do you think was going to happen? And I was like, you know, I'm American. And he was like, what, you thought they were going to shoot you? And he kind of laughed. And, like, it's one of those, like, fucked up jokes that only black people can make to other black people. Or really black Americans can make to other black Americans. Because I kind of felt the way when he said it. And I was like, fuck. Like, the whole world knows that our police are corrupt. They shoot black people for sport. Or kicks. Same difference. And I was like, how fucked up that is. You know, it was really dangerous, too. Stayed in Ghana for like a month and got comfortable. The last day I was there, David and I had gone to the airport like four hours early to, to drop off our bags. And then we had a friend pick us up and took us to a nearby restaurant so we could like get some food and get some drinks. Um, and when I say nearby, I mean like the place is like five minutes away, tops. And then we would catch an Uber back to the airport two hours before our plane took off. So we had this time to kill. Our friend comes and picks us up. She picks us up at drop off instead of pick up. So this officer comes over and like we're literally getting into the car. Like we're standing at the car. Like the officer hadn't paid any attention to the car the whole time we were there. And as soon as we open the door to get in, this, the officer comes over and starts like, you know, basically harassing us or whatever. And was like, no, you can't get in the car here. And I say immediately. And I was like, we're already here. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. He was like, no, you have to go park the car and the lot is like 15 minutes away. And then you have to like walk to there to get in the car. You can't get in the car here. And I was like, this makes no sense. You're causing more commotion holding up traffic than for us to just get in the car and let us go. And I'm going back and forth with this police officer, totally confident because he's not going to shoot me. He's not making sense. He's telling me illogical shit. And I'm telling him the shit that you're saying to me is illogical. That doesn't make any sense. And I told him, no, I'm not doing that. And eventually we just got in the car and drove off. We were like, this makes no sense. He was annoyed with me, but I had no fear that he was going to shoot me because that's the first fear. But that he would shoot me, hit me, hurt me, like in that order of whatever, that he was going to even put his hands on me. At most, the end result of this is going to be a fine, but I'm not going to get taken to jail over it. 
but we're arguing with him and he's just not responding to logic. And I was like, this makes no sense. But I'm saying all this and I'm not getting in the car because I'm not trying to like, because I don't know how far I can push the boundaries. Because again, this ain't my country. The driver is Davida's cousin who's gun yen. And she was like, girl, just get in the car, get in the car. So we just got in the car and literally she started pulling off and the cop stepped out of the way. And that was that. I can't do that here. I got comfortable that month in Ghana, but I know I can't talk to the police that way here. I'll end up dead. My ass ended up dead in the jail cell like, like Sandra Bland because I disobeyed a dumbass police order. That's dangerous. As a black woman doing that shit, that's dangerous. <sighs> that's today's episode. There's other stuff we could talk about. I want to talk about Brittany Griner. She wrote a letter to President Biden. I don't know if it was an open letter, um, but it did make it to the media. And it's heartbreaking. I'll talk about that on Friday's episode. I'll also talk about Creflo Dollar, the prosperity preacher, who over the weekend denounced tithing. He told his congregation in a sermon, he said, I've been wrong all these years about tithing. And I was like, sir, you are the same pastor, are you not? They tried to get your congregation to pay for a $65 million private jet a couple years ago. Now you don't believe in tithing? What scandal is about to come out? You about to catch criminal charges or you got major health issues? You trying to get right with God before you go? Which one is it? He also said he don't believe in tithing. I ain't heard word the first about the money he intends to give back. Like you took all these people's money. Now you're saying it wasn't the right thing to do. You going to get the money back? No form of, of restitution? Okay. So I just hear you talking. Ain't no action behind it? Okay. We'll talk about that next week, though. In the meantime, in my packing frenzy, I did locate a few more items that may be of interest to you. I found some green Ratchet and Respectable t-shirts. I found some green and white crew necks for Ratchet and Respectable. I found some Don't Waste Your Pretty t-shirts. I have not put the t-shirts on the site yet. And I found some Don't Waste Your Pretty hoodies. They're red and pink and they're size medium. They are available on the website. These are the sample sizes. These are just the ones that were photographed. And so they were in the box since I picked them up from the photographer. I also want to let you know that all the merchandise on the site, if you use the discount code going to Ghana, all one word, all caps, going to Ghana, it's an extra 10% off all the ratchet and respectable merchandise and the don't waste your pretty merchandise. I also found a few more mugs. I haven't put those on the site yet either, but they will go up today or tomorrow. If you have not picked up your Ratchet and Respectable merchandise or don't waste your pretty merchandise that has emerged again, this is your last opportunity to do so. I'm closing the store for the website on Sunday. So July 10th is the last day the store will be open. So if you want your merchandise, this is literally last call. So again, that discount code is going to Ghana, all caps, all one word. Type that in for an extra 10%. And keep checking the website um, as I find more stuff, because there's boxes and boxes and boxes. As I find more stuff, I'll keep updating the site. So again, Sunday, store closes. That's it, y'all. No more. No mas. Adios. Arrivederci. Bye-bye. All right. We'll talk again on Friday. That's that. Talk soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.